meeting of uh, Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. If you'd like to rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to entertain a, new, uh, a warrant to approve, uh, I mean, entertain a motion to approve warrants for um, April meals taxes for 228.17, for 12.54, and approve a wire warrant for meals taxes for 828.17 for $26.32. Approve a wire warrant for June meal tax for 828.17 for $15.42. Approve an expense warrant for 829.17 for $289,592.71. And approve a payroll warrant for 829.17 for $166,630.25. And approve an expense warrant for 830.17 for $5,712. And approve an expense warrant for 831.17 for $78,022.54. And approve an expense warrant for 9117 for $5,274.88. You have a motion for that? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And we are going to approve the selectmen's minutes of 8 8 17. And I, I'd like to have motion. a motion, motion to, to approve. To approve. And then I'm going to also like a motion to approve the reports and minutes from other departments EMS for monthly report for July 2017, Cultural Council minutes for 7 10 17. Town Hall Improvement Committee meetings from 721-17, 8-1-17, 8-14-17, and the Advisory Committee meetings for 8-10-17. So we have a motion for both the Selectman's Minutes and the Acknowledgement of Reports. Okay. I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have an announcement. Work has been done on the Dunbrook Bridge. Begun. Has begun. Please be advised that the bridge is expected to remain closed at least until September 30th. Please plan your route accordingly. And Tyler Wolin, District A to Senator Ann Bobey, will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from 10 to 11 a.m. Wednesday, September 20th, and all are welcome. And our first thing on our agenda is a short session of public access. Does anybody have anything you'd like to say this evening? <coughs> <clears throat> what do you find out on the uh, on the smoking process with the town employees? You said you were going to look into that two weeks ago. We have a, we have a policy. Okay. So I see I see town employees smoking. So I'm just asking you what where it's going. We have a policy and, and it's going. If, if you have a complaint, I would register it with either the chairperson of, of the, that, or the superintendent, and uh, or the administrative assistant. Okay, think that will do any good? Probably not. If you put one in writing, I'm just, we will, if I'm you just put bringing it. Writing, Dave, we will okay, have it I'm just bringing it to your attention, okay. that's all. Um, we have two seasonal workers working that I've noticed. And we also have a person from the Warren Highway Department working working in, in our town as well. And you're getting paid. Is there a reason? Can you tell me what's going on? I didn't know we I didn't know we had two seasonal and I didn't know that we had someone from Warren. Are you watching are you reading the warrants before you sign them? Yes, I'm looking. I'm watching them too and, and this individual is getting paid. And I was just wondering why he's getting paid through the highway department. So we have two seasonal. <clears throat> One from Warren? Well, he went to, he, he used to work for us here. Yeah. Now we, I'm sure he's still with Warren. I don't know if he's down here making signs or what. Can you check? So, Madam Chair, yes. I know I, at one point I had, I had swung down um, to highway. Mm -hmm. And 
the, the current state of affairs is that um, we don't have somebody that's willing to take on a 40 hour a week seasonal role. Okay. okay. So what the superintendent, the highway superintendent has is uh, several people who <coughs> across all of them still are not working to the hours level that was established by oh, budget so for the seasonal so worker. He's, he's so he split up the hours. Right. So, okay. so one of the folks okay. like works, I think, like as an EMT somewhere and is, is like on a 4-2 schedule. Okay. So they are only available maybe two days a week, one week, and two days, and maybe three days a week, another week. So when you add all of those people it up together, up to 40 hours. it comes up to less than 40 hours Maybe still. Less than 40. So okay. um, I'm really not concerned how we split those hours. As long no, as the work's that's how done. I'm not concerned with yeah, it either, as long as he's... Uh, okay, but I think it's going over 40 from what I've seen. I'll well, get I'll, I'll get the I'll, warrants. I'll yeah. Double check, but so here's the thing: it's 40 <clears throat> hours for a period of time. There were weeks when we did not have 40 hours. Yeah. Okay. So if it's a little bit over 40 with two and a half people right now, and we didn't spend that budget getting the work done earlier in the season, then I really, if it's, if it's incrementally over 40 right now, it's really not an issue. I can give, um, so. I'll give Cindy a call. Yeah. Cindy. Well, it's. And then, and then you claim that there's somebody from Warren that's working also? I yeah, a, I see. Uh, he used to come in and periodically, just out of the goodness of his heart, do signs for us. Now he's, now he's just coming in and getting paid when he actually does the signage. It's, it's just right. he's doing it for us. So it doesn't matter that he works for work. Okay. He's just no, no. I, I understand it, but I'm us. I'm saying we got three three seasonal workers yeah, now. Yeah, it up. It's still less than one. Well, so. I can't I can't say that that's the case. Well, we well I think it's I more. Check on this day. Yeah, why don't you do that for I me? Will check yeah. it, but we will have an answer for you next week. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, I mean, if, that's if the, the case, if, the, if, if, if advisory right. is interested in it, then that's one thing. But it, I don't know that we owe him an answer on how many hours people are working as a No, but I mean, if he's asked us to check on. No, I'm a citizen, and I can ask that, and I can get an answer from you. Yes, Beth. And then he can always call Karen and get that's the true. answer. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I was just wondering why we got so many so many people here. Now, yeah. can you okay. remember now? Six months. We got six yeah, months. We, under, <clears throat> we understand that day. Not, not just mm -hmm. dollars and cents, it's okay. six months. So, so, so six months, started in April. Actually, mm -hmm. that's the way the bylaws, bylaws read. So, um, what's required, and I have to, I do have to go back to the bylaws, but I, I don't actually think it's phrased exactly like that. Uh, what we have to stay below, I know according to state law, it's 900 and 80 or 960 hours, and it's some yeah. other number that's a little bit lower mm -hmm. for our our, bound, our bylaws. So uh, it's this magical six month thing has nothing to do with it. It's not magical. It's right in well, the bylaws. Be, I think it's it very clear. Have to be done by November. Yeah, it's very clear, Beth. You Let's can put it this way: we have work to be done. Somebody's <laughs> doing the work. Somebody's and, 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 we, and, and we don't have none budgets. of those people have been there long enough to come up <laughs> close to six months by the time yeah. it's all said and done. Okay. In the real world, when you appoint the highway superintendent, he takes care of it. If he's having a problem, then then you may come make a written complaint to the selectmen. Yep. Which I haven't seen in the past since 1970. Well, like I said, Ken, <clears throat> I will check and I'll re get the relay to Karen, and if anybody's interested, Karen will have the answer. Okay. I got one other question. What what was put down on the roads today around town? A lot of people have been asking. It's called chip sale. We've had ad that advertising yeah. like for weeks yeah. actually. Okay. That this is going to get done. Yeah, Herb, we Herb, had a Herb's pretty in-depth conversation about, about it. It. Okay, I'm just I, I'm I'm putting much up on it, but I want everyone else to know because a lot of people have been okay. asking me. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that it? That's. Do we do we is that something we do with roads that are fairly new? Or is there is there a time frame that so, we put so it the, down? So the concept with chip seal. Yeah. It looks it's like we have some chip seal because it takes <clears throat> across the whole road. Sort of any cracks, if the water gets underneath, this avoids it. Instead of going around with a little compressor and trying to fill it up with tar, they do the whole road. So it's good for 10 years. Yeah, and they, and they do okay. go, they do, they do the cracks first, and then, then you do the surface road. And it's a way to extend the life on the road okay. so we don't have to do a full rebuild of the roads. Okay, so now everybody will know that you explained that. Okay. okay. All right, thanks. Yep. Now we have on our agenda the advisory board, and we'll be an in, we have a lot of new members this year, and we're happy that we have a lot of new faces on the board. So we would like to have an introduction of the new members. If we'd like to start 
over here on the on the left. Would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. Have to smile for a group picture. <laughs> My name is Steve Gillis. I'm chair of the uh, committee, and um, uh, I, I'll say this, and then everyone can introduce themselves. We're, so we're, we're, we're just here to introduce ourselves, um, say that we uh, are currently working on a series of uh, goals and our own agendas, and our, our you know to pull together a sense of direction, uh, which we would like to reapproach you and other department heads with to um, uh, sort of lay out how we we intend to work together and uh, move forward. Um, and the rest of us here can introduce ourselves. Okay. Mari Mariano, I'm the recorder, I guess you call it now. Secretary. Ken says secretary, so whatever Ken needs. Okay. Um, and I do the minutes, you know. And well, you're new, welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. And thank you for your minutes. Ken you're Cleveland. welcome. I didn't know I had to give them, Gary, so helpful. And welcome aboard, Ken, you're a new face also. Been around a long time. I know you've been around a long time, but you're on the board now, so it's a new face on the board. Oh, it's nice to see. That's you. right. Yeah. And this, and this Bob Folder. Bob Bob's been on vice for, chair for a couple of years now. And then we'll go to the back row and start from the left. Curtis Schoen, I'm the newest member of the board. Uh, just joined up here in July. Good. Welcome Thank you. aboard. Thank you. Robert Barnes, I've been on the board for quite a while, so <laughs> everybody knows me. Well, thank you for serving all the years. And then we have... Right on fire. And good evening, and welcome aboard to you also, Mr. Farr. Thank you. It's yeah. nice to see new faces on the board. Right here. Yeah. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good. And, and I presume y'all are also in touch with Capital Improvement, because I know Mr. Falter uh, is on that as well. And yes. I know that there's a, a lot of talk about getting some more coherent kind of policies and, and directions together, so. That's part of our, <coughs> our vision is, is, is to make sure we're talking to everyone. Awesome. Yeah. You want to mention that we're still interviewing the two other vacancies? Sure. Oh, we have two of vacancies. We still have two vacancies? Right. We have one. 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 Okay. Three interviews. Okay. <coughs> okay, so then when you have your final one, then you bring them to us, mm -hmm. and then they're on. They, then they're on until the end of June of next year, and then they'll be reappointed. Okay. Thank well. you. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, anything else new going on with the board? Is there anything you need from us that we're not? We're all new, obviously. Yeah. So we're all just trying to get to know each other. Yeah. yeah. Right. Try to get along. Why is Kelly troubling Our next our next meeting is next week. Uh, okay. Uh, I know there's a, uh, many things were postponed yeah. from this past town meeting yes. for April. So I'd like to get it up to speed as to where that is at, and uh, town meeting and anything else coming up uh, in October, so. Um, we don't have a town meeting set for October. Is there a special? We are, we are going to have a special, but there's really no date set yet. I had talked to the town accountant about that today, and um, last year we didn't have one until early December. Because right now we're getting, you know, with the whole new staff that we have on, we're waiting, we're having, um, having an, audit, an audit done for 16 and 17 for the closeout. And so until we know what we have for free cash, we really can't, you know, have a town meeting. So even if it's in the beginning of December, it could be that. Is there anything that we need to know that was carried over um, because of not knowing about the free cash from the May meeting that as a new committee, some of us no, are aware we should be? I don't think so. Okay. Um, you'll, somebody will let us know if there oh, is. Oh, yeah, we'll let you know. Okay. Madam Chair, I th yeah. if, I, if I may, I, I think part of what they may be looking for is that we, what we probably want to do is once we've got the, the finalization from the from the account restructuring and the, yeah. and the audit mm -hmm. that's going on, we may want to do a joint meeting to oh, share yeah. with them the results yeah. so that they can get a good foundation yeah. of where we are as a town financially. Um, and at that point, what we should probably do is pull the, the <coughs> we should start pulling together the warrant even if we don't have a date with the but, capital items that we but left But I don't left think we aside. should, I think it's too soon though, Beth, this, to get a warrant put together. Oh, yeah. It's way too soon. Right. Wait, well, well, that's what I was saying. I said first the yeah, meeting, yeah. first the meeting yeah. re with regards to mm -hmm. where the town stands, and then once we've done yeah. that, we'll no, start working no, together no more based off of that. There's still 
working, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, and that's what they're working on right now. One thing I wanted to ask, have you got, um, did the, uh, I don't even know if Selectman's Office read it, do you have the appropriation sheet from the town clerk yet of monies that we did spend? No. Yeah, yes, we got the ledger. No, no, the town clerk has to do up, it's an appropriation oh, no, sheet. Oh, no, no, Well, he, he should have had it to you by now. It's an appropriation sheet and it shows, you know, where the money's come from. Yep. And then he yep. should also have um, the budget to you also, so that you have the budget. No, we yes. should probably get in touch with him with that, or Karen, maybe we can talk to him about that. Karen, you were kind enough to um, reinstitute us getting a copy of the ledger when one is done each time. Yeah. Um, and Bobby Barnes just explained to me that he always got a hard copy because he doesn't have computer access. Oh, okay. Can, can you arrange that? Sure, I can print it out and put it in the advisory yeah. board's mailbox. Is that what you want? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. And Thank like you. what I said, the appropriations sheet, that is what is spent, the monies that are spent at town meeting mm -hmm. and where they all come from. Right. So he should have given you one for the special that we had, and you should have had one for the annual, and then you should have had the whole budget. Well, we all the change. We had one for the annual, did we? We have the, the annual? That comes from him and certified by the town clerk. Who's he? Michael, yes. Michael Siri. He, he got out of the habit of providing it unless he was asked for well, it. Well, so he had, no, he, he, okay. he, 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 he came out of the habit back of doing that. That is something that has to be done. Oh, I, I concur. I did it every year for 22 years, and I think he can do it too. <laughs> oh, I agree. I'm just saying if they didn't ask for it, they wouldn't well, get well, they shouldn't have to. they shouldn't have to ask. These things have to be done by June 30th before the new fiscal, fiscal year starts. Absolutely. And he's got to get them done, so we've got to talk to him. So he has them. Thank you. <coughs> well, this is all electronic would be great. So. I will talk to him. Yeah. All right. Anything else from the board? Not tonight. Well, Nothing. thank you all for coming in and introducing yourselves, and it's nice to see the new board here. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we are. We're early here. Do we want to? The hearings don't start until 7. So, why don't we do the special use for them? Oh, yeah, that's Do we have, we have a special use permit here for approval for Quaybog Pond from the Weed Hog ang Anglers. And, uh, we're gonna, they want to have this on 9-24-17, and I would like a motion to approve this. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number six, sign yep. mass historical final report documentation. Yeah, you had you had done that earlier, but yeah. just if we could take just yep. a minute, just so that people on the camera can see this document. This is the uh, uh, original copy of the Brookfield Adena Archaeological Survey Project report. Um, under the leadership of Mass Historical Commission, University of Massachusetts in the town of Brookfield. What's, uh, this is through phase three. I have two phase four documents that we'll receive uh, later this week or early next week. Um, and then we will submit this and with that we will get a check back from Mass Historical for $17,500. But just so that people understand the, the, the breadth of, the, if you just throw it down the, down the stairs to see how far it goes as far as the documentation. What I will say is that there are several recommendations that come out of this. Maybe we can, because we have 12 minutes here, we'll take a minute. Um, there were numbers of, and what, what are called features, there are numbers of burials that were found in the 60s, um, and there are additional burials, features that were found uh, at, at this time. Uh, what it's really saying is that the area of the 15 acres is peppered with uh, burials. 
And so to the idea of thinking that you'd ever have an opportunity to reuse that property for development or otherwise is, is probably very suspect. In fact, um, the roadway that is there um, actually uh, goes over two graves that were identified. So that the idea of having a roadway um, would be problematic. What, what is being suggested is that the, uh, the open areas as you enter the area would, would be an area where you'd want the vegetation to grow back. What we've been doing for the last two years now is brush hogging that area to keep it open so that we could actually get to this, the space and so that they could, the archaeologists could do the work. Uh, what it really says now is that we really shouldn't be brush hogging that area. If, the, if we're going to be brush hogging that area, it would be for some trails or paths, walking paths, or, and, that, and that sort of thing. And they can advise, the archaeologists can advise us as to the location. Um, and as far as another area, it's a grassy area. It used to be a ball field by where the cemetery, uh, not cemetery, the swimming pool used to be. That would be an area that one we could, could, could eventually look at as a picnic area or the like. Uh, and keep kept as open or grassy area, but uh, quite honestly, uh, the idea of using this this site for uh, uh, redevelopment and whatnot is probably some of that. What what this report does for us is it puts us in line for national historic uh, national uh, national historic monies such that we can preserve it. And I'd look to do something like that later in the fall or early next year, um, because again. Uh, the, the buildings that are there probably should come down and, and again wait, waiting for a final uh, analysis of that but it's suggesting to me that they ought to come down. So uh, with that uh, we'll, we'll talk more about it but that's something that we have to, to face into. So anyway so that's Mass Historic and if we've got one more minute. One more minute, yeah. One, one more minute just to remind folks that uh, uh, the Brookfield Open Space and Recreation Plan we're in the midst of uh, updating it. Uh, we're looking for s numbers of surveys to come back to have some uh, public meetings on the topic later in the fall. Mm -hmm. So we've now opened it up. We were closing the uh, feedback to today, but we're, we're going to continue it to the 12th now to get uh, more surveys back. We've got about a set, we've got about 70 surveys back so, so far. So just that. Thank you. You're welcome. And once again, I thank you for all the work that yeah. you've been doing down there. On the thank you. Okay, do we want to find, uh, okay, correspondence, one of you will go down a no. car. We don't have anything really under other. No, I, no, I just did the other that I okay. had. Okay, okay, this is Matt Dot from them. And uh, we're pleased to inform you that the Chapter 90 Local Transportation Aid for Fiscal 2018 will be total of 200 million statewide pending final legislation approval. This letter certifies that pending final passage of the bond authorization, your community's Chapter 90 appointment for fiscal 2018 is $163,720. And that's from uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. And this is all signed. So it's not all good. Okay. So wh why don't we go? We could probably go into the hearing early. No, we can't start we can't here. We could recess for five minutes and then come back and then? drink. We've got eight minutes on it. You want to recess then for eight? We'll recess I've for eight minutes. Five minutes, actually, according to uh, so, Saturday. Yeah, I have 6.55. So we'll recess Six, for five, five minutes. minutes and then we'll start up again. Good job. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. As you know, my name is Jeffrey Blake and I'm your town council. I would suggest that you open the first hearing with a motion, move to open the, he the public hearing with respect to the uh, uh, pursuant to chapter 139, section one for a dangerous building at 30 Kimball Street in Brookfield. Okay, I would like um, a motion. You have that motion. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right, Madam uh, Chair, um, again, I'm Jeffrey Blake. Uh, just to read into the record, um, it looks like on August 23rd, 2017, a notice was left at the last unusual 30 Kimball Street, Brookfield, and a copy mailed on 8-23-17 to an Evelyn Knight. The notice was regarding notice of a public hearing pursuant to General Law Chapter 139, Section 1 for dangerous building at 30 Kimball Street, Brookfield, Mass. The notice says, Dear Property Owner, pursuant to Chapter 139, Section 1, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to determine whether the property located at 30 Kimball Street, Brookfield, Mass., is a nuisance to the neighborhood or dangerous, and if found to, to, to be so, to describe its disposition, prescribe its disposition, alteration, or regulation. A fire has made this dwelling unsafe and completely uninhabitable. No effort has been made to secure or restore property since time of the fire. The property is open to the weather and a danger to children due to not being fenced off and open. The hearing has been scheduled for 7 p.m. Tuesday, September 5, 2017 in the Banquet Hall at the Brookfield Town Hall, Brookfield, Mass. As the record owner of the property located at 30 Kimball Street, Brookfield, Mass., you are invited to attend the hearing. You will be given an opportunity to be heard and to introduce evidence. You may be represented by counsel if you so choose, sent out by you, Madam Chair. Um, I would suggest that this would be Exhibit 1 to this particular hearing. Uh, if you want, I think you have copies of it. I'll, yes. I can hold these right here. Um, uh, so I, I guess we'll start, we, we being the town, we will start the um, the hearing by presenting evidence. I have here the, the health agent. Um, and could you state your name for the record, sir? I'm Lee Travis. And can you put your right hand in the air? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out? I do. Okay, Mr. Jarvis. And you're the health agent for the town of Brookfield, is that correct? Right. Okay, sir, I'm going to show you what, what are, what are a, a number of photographs. And I would like it if you could just go through each photograph, show them to the board. I think they have copies. But just to, to describe to the board uh, a couple of things. Do you recognize that property? Yes, I do. Is that the uh, 30 Kimball Street? Yes, it is. Okay, can you go to the first photograph? Um, does that, does that, is that a true and accurate copy? Well, are all the pictures true all and accurate copies? Are true and accurate. Oh. As of today? As of today. Okay. Right. And can you just go through and, and, and let the board know exactly the conditions that are at that property? Well, I concur with the letter you sent that it is open to the weather. Um, it is a danger to the neighborhood, to children. Um, it's a uh, place for insect and rodent coverage and uh, should be uh, addressed mm. immediately. Okay. In your opinion, should that the property be demolished? Yes. Okay. I don't think this one is to the point where it can be. Thank you, and and this will be an, an exhibit. And, and just for the for the court for the board, you can see the the windows are wide open to the weather. There's nobody living in there. You can see again. This is even a better picture, open to all the elements, including young children and and the like. A fire happens yeah, here. It's an attractive nuisance. And a fire happens yeah. here. Our first responders, while they probably wouldn't want to go in. If they believe there's somebody in there, they will go in, and that can cause a huge problem for us. This is the interior, is that correct? This is the interior of the building. As you can see, it hasn't been inhabited or cared for in a very long time. Um, same. All right, is anybody here for the property owner? Seeing no one, um, I suggest that you could close the public portion, the evidentiary here, pro unless somebody, does anybody else want to speak regarding uh, this property? I would suggest that you can close the, like the, the evidentiary portion of this and then deliver it. Motion, motion to close. Motion second. Okay, you, you now have the ability to, dis uh, to, to prescribe a, a disposition of this property. Um, First of all, you'd have to declare it a nuisance or not. If you declare it a nuisance and a danger to the public, then you could go on and you could uh, uh, prescribe a, a, um, a remedy anywhere from ordering the, the owner to, to fix it up, to remodel it, to, or, to, 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 or, or to demolish it. Uh, and, and, you know, really the sky's the limit. And again, you also have the ability to give a, you know, a prescribed time frame for this to occur. I would, uh... 
Mm -hmm. I'd make, make a motion that, that it is, in fact, a nuisance. Okay. And then the second is that it be de demolished within 30 days. Um, I'll second that motion. All in favor? All right. And so now we'll, we'll close that. So, so let me, let, okay, so back to the, pro, the process. Mm -hmm. So we, we've declared that it should be removed. You declared and, a nuisance, and, removed. And, and given that, the uh, do we go back to the uh, communication again, looking to the owner to make it make make that happen in 30 days? The, 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 yes, the, the way the process works is you, you then, you, you're gonna, you're, we're, I'll draft up an order for you. You will, so you will forward that to the property owner, giving them 30 days. Yep. If they fail to comply within 30 days, the statute seems to contemplate self-help, meaning the board of selectmen or the town can go in and do the demolition. I, I strongly recommend that we that we go to court and yep. just get verification or, or mm -hmm. uh, uh, authority from the court to, to undertake the demolition. Also, under Chapter 139, Section 3A, um, the town can then lien the property for the cost of the demolition. I do want to caution you, though, that the, the lien that we have is not our usual municipal tax super lien. We would we will we will get in line. We we don't jump to like like most of our a lot of our municipal lean sewer water the like. We jump the line here. We won't. We'll we'll be in an order. Um, it's my understanding that that I didn't see any banks on here, so I, I'm not sure that any banks still still are in in the picture. Probably which um, we would we we'll we'll notice everybody that needs to be noticed. So I have a, a one quick question, which might be out, be outside the scope of this, and I, I don't need an answer necessarily tonight, or at all, if you deem that it's not worth getting an answer for. But uh, just from a hypothetical standpoint, um, we have a lot of properties in town that have had homes on there for a while that, under the current zoning laws, <clears throat> would be would be non-compliant or non-conforming to our zoning regulations. Normally, if, if another owner had the property, or if an owner has the property, and say a fire occurs and then you tear down the building, you've got like two years, mm -hmm. I believe, according to our bylaw to rebuild. Um, it, would we necessarily start the two-year clock if somebody wanted to redevelop that property from the, from the date of the demolition, or would we have the option with something like this if we wanted to allow an extension or allow a variance for when the property next changes hands to give, give the new owners two years to, to, uh, to put something in? I think that that would most likely be up to your ZBA. Okay. That, that's so a that's zoning ZBA determination, and, and it would be a, it, provided, of course, that they are pre-existing non-conforming uh, uses. It may not be. It may be a use that is allowed, and a, and the structure may meet all the all the zoning requirements. Okay. So then, then by right, they right. could. Like I said, I'm just asking kind of more from the theoretical because I have no idea whether this particular one's conforming or not. Conforming. No, it's a good question for for these three. Sure. Okay, so we're all set. I'd like to uh, have a motion to close the hearing on uh, 30 Kimball Street. I'll make the motion to close the hearing. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Our next one. I think we're going to have to. I, I hate to interrupt you, Madam Chair, but it yeah, says seven fifteen, and we do need to give. The owners the appropriate time. We have to recess again. Here are the exhibits for that. I don't know if you want me to give them. I have one. No. No. No, that's no, good. no, I have oh, yeah, yeah. I have electronically too. Oh, I didn't print it because I'm saving the tree. Yep. It's all good. I have a question for you. If the value of the property is to be recessed, I'll make a motion to recess oh. for five minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. That's why. If the value of the property Okay, I'd like to make a motion to uh, reopen the meeting at 7.15. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, our next hearing is on 16 North Brookfield <clears throat> Road, and we'll turn that over to Attorney Blank. And, and I suggest that we make a motion to open the public hearing pursuant to Chapter 139, Section 1, for a dangerous building at 16 North Brookfield Road, Brookfield, Massachusetts. Aye. You have that motion. I'd like to second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, Madam Chair. A notice was sent, and I will read the notice into the record. A notice was sent. 
it looks like data delivery was 8 11 17 to Eleanor Harris regarding a notice of public hearing pursuant to general law chapter 139 section 1 for dangerous building at 16 North Brookfield Road Brookfield Massachusetts dear property owner pursuant to general law 139 section 1 the Brookfield Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to determine whether the property located at 16 North Brookfield Road Brookfield Mass is a nuisance to the neighborhood or dangerous and if found to be so to prescribe its disposition alteration or regulation this dwelling is unsafe and completely uninhabitable no effort has been made to to secure or restore property to the by the prior or current owner it is also a danger to children due to not being fenced off and open the hearing has been scheduled for 7 15 p.m tuesday at september 5th 2017 in the banquet hall at the brookfield town hall brookfield massachusetts as the record owner of the property located at 16 north brookfield road brookfield mass you are invited to attend the hearing you will be given an opportunity to to be heard and to introduce evidence, you may be represented by counsel if you so choose. And again, it was sent out by you, Madam Chair, uh, and signed by you. Um, so I would like to start uh, at least the presentation part of this to you um, on the town's behalf. Again, um, I'm going to provide the health agent with a copy of some photographs. And again, sir, I, I suggest that you are under oath. Actually, why don't you just We'll do it again. Why don't you raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, can you explain to the board what those photographs show? These photographs are 6 North Brookfield Road in Brookfield. Um, the home that's here. 16. 16. 16. Didn't I say that? Oh, 16. I'm sorry. And uh, the home is in such a state of disrepair, it's open to the weather, uh, public nuisance. Is it uninhabitable? Uninhabitable in is its current state, and you know, harbor for insects, rodents, and children. It, it, is it, in your opinion, a public safety ha nuisance and hazard? Public health and safety nuisance, correct. And in your opinion, um, what should the disposition of this particular uh, uh, structure be? In its state of disrepair, it should be demolished. It should be demolished. Thank you. And again. Um, we'll put in the record, but we have five photographs. <coughs> you can see the exterior of the building is all grown up um, here. Again, open to the weather, open to, more importantly, open to children, vagrants, people going in there, uh, setting fires or whatever. Our first responders have to go in, and that could, that could result in a, da in a huge danger. Again, it's open. You can see the interior of the building. There's a lot of, for lack of a better word, junk. Um, and the same here, you can see the interior of the building is significantly dilapidated. Now, is there anybody, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on behalf of the property owner? Is there anybody here to speak at all on this property? I suggest that you could now close the evidentiary portion of this hearing and make your disposition. Okay, I will close the uh, I'll, make, I'll give you a motion I'll to close the, the hearing. To close the hearing. I'll second that. Okay, well, um, I would like to... Uh, yeah, well, let's, let's say oh, aye. Oh, 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 aye. Yep. Sorry. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I would like to make a motion that... Um, probably within 30 days that we should demolish this because so, the safety hazard. So I'll so, give you the motion that we declare it a nuisance. Right. A nuisance. And then give the property owner 30 yeah. to, days to do the demolish. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, any more discussion on that? All in favor, aye. 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 So this is the same thing, I'll have to bring that down to the court also. Yep, we'll do all three of them together. So I motion to adjourn until 7.30. So motion to adjourn until 7.30. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Um, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we'd like to open the hearing up again at 7.30. We're home on 4 South Maple Street. Turn it over to Attorney. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, I suggest that we... <coughs> 
Start with a motion to open the public hearing pursuant to Chapter 139, Section 1 for a dangerous building at 4 South Maple Street, Brookfield. I would like to make a motion to open the hearing. And I'll give you a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, I will start by reading the notice. The notice was addressed to Bernadette LaPointe, uh, care of Jean Paul LaPointe. It looks like it was signed for and received on 8 11 17. Uh, the notice is regarding notice of a public hearing pursuant to Chapter General Law Chapter 139, Section 1 for dangerous building at 4 South Maple Street, Brookfield, Mass. Dear property owner, pursuant to General Laws Chapter 139, Section 1, the Brookfield Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to determine whether the property located at 4 South Maple Street, Brookfield, Mass. is a nuisance to the neighborhood or dangerous, and if found to be so, to prescribe its disposition, alteration, or regulation. Specifically, a fire has made this dwelling unsafe and completely uninhabitable. No effort has been made to secure or re restore the property since the time of the fire. The hearing has been scheduled for 7.30 p.m. Tuesday, September 5th, 2017, in the banquet hall at the Brookfield Town Hall, Brookfield, Massachusetts. As the record room of the property located at 4 Maple, 4 Maple South Maple Street, um, Brookfield, Mass., you are invited to attend the hearing. You will be given an opportunity to be heard and to introduce evidence. You may be represented by counsel if you so choose. So again, I will open this hearing by again going to our health agent. And sir, you raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. I'm going to show you some pictures. Can you explain to the, to the board what those pictures are? Those pictures are 4 South Maple Street. Uh, the building is in such a state of disrepair, trash, garbage, debris, uh, roof caving in, open to the weather, um, unsafe for the neighborhood children, also for your first responders, harborage for animals and insects, public nuisance. In your opinion, is it a public nuisance? Absolutely. In your opinion, what should be the disposition of this property? That property should be removed. Okay. All right. May I have a And again, <laughs> members of the board, just for, so you can see, and you can see the, the why there are there is some uh, boarding up here. You can see this dormer right here has fallen in on itself. The second picture. Uh, again, you can see the junk and the coverage for rodents and also the hazard for the first responders, as the health agent just indicated. Again additional junk and debris making it probably impossible to get in there and um, that would be the end of the presentation is there anybody here to speak on behalf of the property owner john Wolfgraff. um who, who did you give that notice to again better get that notice went to bernadette care of jean jean paul lapointe John, John or Jean, which one? It's J E A N. Okay, okay, John. Okay, so he got the notice. Yeah, in fact, he and I will. I'll read it in. In fact, he, he responded with a written letter to the board, and he I will state that he wanted to get some items out of the house. I, I'll read the letter into okay. the into the evidence. I uh, just wanted to make sure that you were aware. Of okay. He has a hard time. He's up in North Brookfield. You know, uh, I don't know if it's an elderly place, whatever it is that he's living up there now. He has, he has no license, no vehicle. Mm -hmm. He he, he did say that, that. And, okay. and I'll read this in. But I, I I don't know. I think there's a gentleman back here. Are you here to speak on this property? I'd like to speak about the property. Yes. Well, well, go ahead before I read in. Yeah, the, my name is Roger Carroll. I'm a buyer to this property. Uh, I would like to re, um, re, uh, re, I'm sorry. I'd like to request the town accelerate the demolition of this building on the grounds of safety. Um, so on a number of occasions, the most recent yesterday, I've heard um, pieces of the building fall to the ground. So yesterday I was out in my backyard, heard something fall, walked over to investigate, saw a piece of the roof that gave way and fell to the ground. So as I walked around the property, um, kind of looking for other hazards, I saw that the, the uh, opening to the basement, or, or, or the, uh, um, yeah, the opening to the basement was a wooden structure that was, a lot of the way is probably an 18-inch hole that was open in it. 
Um, when I look down, it's filled with water, so obviously that would be a, a hazard not only to children, to adults, to any animals that are walking by. There's been cats that have taken residence up in, uh, uh, in that in the, in the property. Um, the odor is, is, is really bad on uh, you know, warm, humid summer days. Not only the fire, but the rotting debris and garbage from, from the property. It really is a, a, a safety uh, and a nuisance as, as well. So um, request that if you, if you have to prioritize one of these buildings, prioritize this building to come down. All right, I, I, we did receive um, on August 25th, 2017, a letter regarding the hearing of September 5th, 2017 from, is it John Paul? John. John, 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 Paul. John Paul LaPointe. It says here, um, Board up of Selectmen, I will be unable to attend meeting on September 5th as I have no transportation. I've been working diligently to retrieve family heirlooms and memorabilia when I can procure a ride. The fire of last December was not only devastating, but a true loss. This year has been no better. In late winter, I lost my dear sister, and since then, I've been hospitalized multiple times for kidney stone operations. I have not only I have had not only an economic loss, but also a physical loss. I am still re retrieving family memorabilia from the house and selling these items to raise money to level the second floor, comma, roof, the first floor, and gut the interior. I can use some aid. I've been looking for someone with a truck to help move large pieces of furniture and to have some time, some time that has been lost while residing in a nursing home for six months because it took that long to find housing. Also losing time being hospitalized and recuperating. There is still 72 years of fond family memories which I wish to retrieve. Sincerely, John. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? So again, I, I suggest that you could close the evidentiary portion okay, of the I'd, I'd <coughs> like to close the evidentiary portion of the meeting. Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Okay. Well, I'll make the motion again that this property is a nuisance and it should be demolished within 30 days. I'll make, I'll make the motion. Oh, then I'll second. No, I'll, no, no, I'll second your motion. Okay, thank you. No, I think, I think it's a sad state, sad state of affairs, but if we can give him the 30 days to retrieve what he can retrieve, uh, and again, it's, it's a safety hazard, but it's still his safety hazard rather than our safety hazard, but giving we, those 30 days. I was just talking to Attorney Blake a few minutes ago, and shouldn't uh, the building inspector maybe have something to say that the place isn't even safe for somebody to go in there? He owns the building. <coughs> I mean, it's his. I mean, it's his choice. If he wants to put himself at risk, that's his own. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Christy. Not to take a look at the property, but you know, fire chief, have you took any look at the property? Not since the, yeah, my man manager. Uh, not since the morning when the fire incident was concluded, and at that point, there's been no change to its status, and it was, as Mr. Jarvis and town council illustrated, it's beyond repair. And even anything, even it has been water damaged, even through the amount of, the fire happened mid winter, so the amount of water damage that was there, that everything left in the building has froze, re froze, thaw, mm -hmm. refroze mm -hmm. countless times, plus the snowfall, plus spring rains. So any items in there, you know, I wish them the best, but it's, 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 it's questionable at yeah. best. And I could certainly exercise with him being um, living there for many years and preparing the heirlooms. However, I would question any reasonable person who wanted to enter the building based on the amount of damage that's done right. to that building. The only, the only notable item and the only visible item they may be able to do, retrieve safely is the motor vehicle on the premises, which you may be able to part away into having someone help them remove items from the interior, but there's a Jeep 
in the driveway that was there that day. I don't believe it's registered, but that's the only item that's really safely that can be removed. So that, that's not removed. That, that I don't know where that falls into this process because that's a separate item from the rest of the building. Mm -hmm. If we're going to tear the building down and leave a motor vehicle there, that you would still have title to. And for obviously the council on that. If, but we'll give them about 30, days, 30 to, days to get things out of there and after 30 days if well and if i understand correctly he's responsible to take yeah. the building down yeah. or the lien goes in place well if we take the building down the lien would go in place yeah. yeah yeah so and back to the idea of prioritizing we could definitely prioritize this over the others yeah Yes. So we have a motion. Did, no. did we vote on the motion? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I, did. I had a question. You stated that you're going to go to court if you think to make sure this this process is, is legally done properly. Is that going to be? Does the thirty day start after that? How does that work? You, you, typically, the way this would work is that the board has ordered this to be demolished in thirty days. If it's not demolished in thirty days then there's been a violation of the order and then the court under the statute has the ability to go in i'm sorry that the, the town has the ability to go in to the court and ask that it be authorized to do the teardown so, so to answer your question the property owners have 30 days to comply with this order plus the time to the court system so that i give them a little couple more moments it's Maybe. it's relatively quick yeah especially yeah. because in in light of the the emergency nature of a lot of these Type of situations, it will be quick. Okay. Typically, forty-eight hours. So they'll get a little bit more time than thirty days. Okay. Well, if I would say, if you're advising him to get it done in the thirty days, okay. I really would. And, I've, already, I've already, yeah, I've already spoken to him about it. And if somebody's helping, you get the letters that you know issues. Mm -hmm. So you know. But if if you're if you're helping him, I, I would be very careful going in there. No, well, I'm not helping him. Okay. So we've made a motion. Did we make a motion? It, it is a nuisance and the, to be tear, torn down, and we can certainly prioritize that activity. Okay. I'll second that motion. I think it was your motion. Was it my motion? Yeah, yeah I, I think we have to say. Thing. I think we have to say aye. 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 Those in favor, aye. Okay. So we'll vote then to close this hearing. Yep. All so in favor. I will we're motion. Chairman to draft up the motion, okay. the, uh, draft up the orders signed by Madam Chair, okay. and we will get those out as soon as we can. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Our next one here is um, we're going to um, move into the executive session. I assume that. Oh. I'm done? You're done. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeff, for coming. Thank you, guys. Okay. You're done, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Liz. Now I'd like to move in a motion to move into executive session for items three and six. Three is to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. And six is to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate. If the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the public body. You have a motion to that effect. Second. All in favor? Aye. Link, uh, Lincoln, aye. Snyder, aye. Kaufman, aye. Okay, and then we will reopen again to close the regular meeting. Anyway, no other business. No, we're all, no other business. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Favorite.